Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got another exciting battery test, teardown, and review for you today, this time from A. Oakley Battery. Have you ever heard of A. Oakley Battery? Probably not, because this is one of their first 12 volt consumer grade models offered to the US market. This is the 150 amp hour version. They also have a 100 amp hour version and some smaller ones as well. A. Oakley is a huge manufacturer of industrial and commercial lead acid batteries and they also make large lithium home energy storage batteries. But this is our first venture into the 12 volt market, so I'm gonna find out if it's good. Let's get right into it. Time for the capacity check on the A. Oakley 150 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Use my time USB charger, charge it to full. You can see the little green LED there is on. So I'll disconnect that and get you a voltage check on the terminals before I hook it to the capacity rig. All right, so I'm gonna check the resting voltage after coming off charge. It's only been a few minutes, so we'll see, we'll see what it is. 14.18 volts, so that's good. Can't get you my normal view due to the width of this case. I'll discuss that more in just a moment, but uh, my wire leads for the test rig are a little short to have you seeing the, the name of our I'll work on it, but rest assured it's the A. Oakley 12150 sitting right there. So I've got the energy meter cleared out, 14.11 volts still. Uh, the number to beat is 1920 watt hours. So we'll see if it can pull that or more. So I'll turn the inverter on and I'll connect the load. And here is the load. Plugging into the inverter now should give us 35, 36 amps worth of draw. Let it stabilize and get you a final number. 34 and a half ish amps, 470 watts. Same load I always use, a portable power station. So I'll let this pull for a few hours and see what it can do. All right, I'm coming up, well, right there, the estimated halfway point for the A. Oakley. 150 amp hour battery right there. So I'm gonna do a little harder hit on it for a few minutes to test the BMS. So I'm gonna put a big draw on it temporarily and just make sure BMS can handle big current. So let me get it hooked up. All right, I got 107 amps coming out of it now. Changed to a 48 volt charger. Finally got it to stabilize. I'm gonna see if I can bring it all the way up. All right, as close as I can get. The inverter is right on overcurrent is beeping at me so i'll see how long it holds but uh yeah that's the inverter beeping at me not because the voltage because i'm past its rating so the little alpha is chunking along i got it fully loaded well the t tokus breaker works as designed <laughs> 45 seconds at 150 amps right at the trip curve on that breaker and it popped so everything shut down so Cannot sustain that load long enough to test the BMS because the supporting hardware is not there. So I'll go back to the regular pool and just see what capacity we have on the A. Oakley. But uh, that's good to see right there. That was, that was quicker than I thought. All right, back up and running. So uh, it saved my, my data for the A. Oakley. So I'm just gonna let it pull right here and I'll see what it does. Voltage is starting to click off pretty fast on the A. Oakley. 1892 watt hours out of a possible 1920. I don't know if we're gonna make it. I don't know. All right, 10.62 and dropping fast, 1901 watt hours. I don't think we're gonna make capacity. All right, the inverter just shut off with the Aokley battery connected. We ended up with 1905 watt hours of real world capacity through the alpha inverter. All right, so the final tally was 1,905 watt hours out of the A. Oakley battery. It's rated at 1,920 watt hours. That's how it's advertised. So we divide those out. We end up with 99.2% of rated capacity. Uh, 0.8 of a percent off of its mark uh, was the big, huge rip. You know, did I lose some in heat? Possibly. That's close enough. I'll call that a pass. Well, that's a shame that it came up a little slack on its capacity. Uh, you know, close enough. I'll continue on. I want to tear this thing apart, make sure everything's balanced inside and all that. But let me talk about the size of this battery first and give you a couple of specs before I do the teardown. Now, the first thing you may notice about this battery, it's got an oddball, you know, odd case size. 
that's the first thing I noticed too. The case is kind of kind of a different size than what I'm used to seeing, you know, especially on a 150 amp hour battery. You know, now we got a bunch of compact batteries and things nowadays, so I'm used to seeing a little bit smaller cases. But you know, don't knock it just because of the case size. So we are 19 inches long and nine and a half inches tall. And let me get you the width on it because it's a skinny case. You'd think it's more like a 4D, but it's not. You know, it's a good bit narrower than the, the big 200 amp hour cases. So let me get you a, a good width right here to see. So we're right at six and three quarters wide. Well, more like six and 11 sixteenths, but close enough. The battery does have inset terminals and it's got multi-position mounting. So you don't have to have it sitting like this. You can have this battery mounting in any position as long as the terminals aren't upside down. So this would be the non-approved installation like that. That's not approved. That's the no-no. You don't put it like that, but any other position is perfectly fine. Go over a couple of quick things and I'll get on with it. The manual it comes with, just a basic little manual. Uh, basically, don't, don't charge below freezing. You can use it in you know 4S configuration for 51.2 volt pack or four parallel. Um, you know, pretty simple little basic manual. Nothing too exciting here. I'm not expecting low temp charge protection because it says right in the manual to charge at 34 f and above. I'm expecting it to be more just a basic style energy storage lithium iron phosphate battery. But let's find out. Now time for the teardown portion for the Oakley battery. So you can see it's still intact right there, but it won't be for long. I'll be right back with you after I get the lid off. We'll see how this thing is built. Oh yes, I absolutely love when they're epoxy together. That makes for a very difficult extraction, if you will. But yes, this one was epoxied all the way around. Save the last little bit right here so we can look at it at the same time together as always. So hopefully I don't snap the lid off after trying to be so careful with it. So, uh, yeah, you can hear all that epoxy and plastic cracking. Hold on, let me uh, let me work on it just another second. It just needed a little bit more persuasion. So, so look at those large wires in this battery right off the bat. I always like seeing large leads going to the terminals on the battery. So let me, uh, let me see what size these are. I'll get you a good shot of that here in a second or zoom in if I can. It's very faint marking right there, six. Two sixes, uh, 200 degree jacket of silicone leads on the positive and same on the negative, two number sixes. So fairly large wires for a 150 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Just give you a good look down in there. You can see we got de high density foam. We got spray foam around the cell pack right there, which is kind of unique. Let me take the, uh, the lid all the way off. First, let me check, make sure everything's tight, which it is very tight right there. Uh, just looking around looking around at it let me uh let me get this lid off and we'll look down in there a little bit more so you can see on these terminals coming out of the battery to the lid you can see it's a hexagonal hydraulic crimp right there with heat shrink tubing over the wires together i mean that's that's put, put together pretty nicely and that was rtv silicone right there holding that terminal bolt on so it didn't have any vibration or anything like that and it was very very tight torqued properly and here's a view down in here while i was talking about the foam now that the lid's out of the way we can look down here so expanding foam around the battery so it's not going to move <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that's unique uh now the problem is to see if i can get it out of this casing with that foam so i don't know if it's glued down under the cells or what but i'm gonna look at that bms and everything right there here's the cell configuration for 150 amp hour cells uh, the model number on these cells are indicating 150 as well and just to pull this black tape back just to verify i've had, not had any regrinding or anything of the qr i'll show you that again you can see there's nothing that appears that the qr code's been ground off and rescribed on there anything like that re-engraved it appears to be original qr code on these cells we've got nice laser welds connecting everything together. Nice wire management. Got everything taped together right here, routed nicely through the battery cell pack itself. Machine screw connections for the balance leads. Uh, nothing, nothing loose and everything's got some silicone adhesive on top of that as well. So pretty decent, pretty decent. I don't see really anything to complain about at this point. So now I gotta see if I can get this out and we'll look at it a little closer. All right, I picked and I pried and done everything I could to try to get this cell pack out of this battery case that 
foam will not let it move. It is wedged in there with that expanding foam. It appears to be a closed cell expanding foam. It's super dense. It's not like the great stuff foam you put around, you know, windows and fire caulk. This stuff is solid as a rock, so it feels more like a closed cell foam or something. So I destroyed the battery. Uh, went down and sawed down through the sides right there and down through the bottom. So all in the name to get you all the information about this battery, you know, best I can. So I'm gonna break the side of the case off now so we can see what in the world this BMS is in this battery. Still don't wanna come off. That darn foam has it just glued in there. Something serious. Wow. All right, let me work on a little bit more. Of course, the side of the case flew off right before I hit go on the camera, but all that to access this BMS. Uh, hopefully you can see all that foam down there. Look at that, they throw the foam to this thing. There's no way that was coming out of there. And there's the BMS. According to their literature, it's a 150 amp BMS. It looked like a JBD from the top, but I wanted to see down the side. I don't see a JBD data tag. Uh, so it's a JBD styled BMS and looks like it has no uh, sensors, no probes or anything remote from the BMS. There appears to be a thermal switch on the BMS right there. So for all I can tell at this moment, the only protection this battery has is high temperature protection on the BMS. So if the cells get hot or the BMS, that thermal switch right there should take it out. Uh, let me look a little bit further just to make sure I'm not missing anything on this battery. So there's all the tape cut out of the way. I said this JBD style with heat sinks, but no data tag that I can see. And it's not coming out of that foam right there. So, uh, you know, I guess you'd have to pry everything out and break all the foam off the battery if you ever had to service it or work on it or anything like that. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any data on there. There's just the balance leads. There's no, uh, yeah, no no probes, no thermal switches, remote of the BMS, 100% sure. I just wanted to look in there and make sure. So the only protection we have would be that thermal. And here's a view of the switch right there. You can see the thermal switch right there. And that's like a standard 60C to 70C switch. Uh, don't know what it is because it's pinched in there. I don't want to risk damaging the BMS trying to pry that out, but that's pretty much industry standard, either a 60 or 70 degree C switch right there. So that's our, all our protections on it. So no low temp test needed on this one. So, you know, just a basic uh, PMS right there. Which I Oakley does say only charge this battery from 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so, you know, they don't indicate any low temp. I wasn't surprised to, you know, to not find it, but it's nice to get surprised and find it sometimes What better than being advertised as and missing. And there's that uh, notorious foam right there, look. Look at that stuff. It's, it's just super, super dense. It doesn't compress or anything like that. So, you know, there's that. That foam through all these ribs right here on this BMS. There was no way to get that out, but I don't see any defects, you know, in the battery itself. None of the cells are swollen or bulging or anything like that. It's got, you know, foam spacing between the cell group. Uh, you know, it's a little closer on the back side here, but you know, it's still got a good quarter three eighths inch clearance on the case right there. So if you took a impact from the side, which, you know, there's foam down in there too. I don't know if you can see it, but you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a foam factory. But, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Please hit that like button if you don't mind since, uh, you know, kind of done all this so you can see it. I'd really appreciate that. I'll give you a close up of this QR code right here. So after the pull down, I charge this battery back up uh, partially. So I wanna check and see if the cells are balanced, see if they're matched pretty good. Cause if y'all remember that other battery from a while back, the cells were all over the place. So let's check, they say Oakley and see how balanced the cells are after partially charging back up after that pull down. So we'll check right here, 3.291. And this cell, 3.291. This one back here, 3.291. And then back here, finally, 3.291. So a very balanced and looks like appear to be well-matched 
uh, cell group in this battery, which is good to see. That's a very good uh, voltage gradient. I mean, basically nothing between the cells as far as a gradient. So very well matched. I like seeing that. I'm gonna share my final thoughts on the Aokli 12 volt, 150 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with you. Um, just a little slack on capacity. Uh, you know, the cells were matched good. You know, no problem with that. I think it's just where I hit it real hard and these cells are probably sized right at 150 amp hours is why I didn't really get much above that. So that's okay. That's acceptable. That's close enough. I'll call it, you know, call that good. Uh, all this foam and stuff in here, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I don't really like seeing spray foam inside the battery. And I like a smaller case, a little bit more compact case would be nice as well. And the BMS is a little basic. Uh, a remote, you know, high temp switch or something like that would be nice. Or even a sensor to monitor a different spot of the cell pack instead of just right under the BMS's heat sink. So, you know, there you have it. Just a basic lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you, A. Oakley, for sending the battery for testing. Really appreciate that. Uh, any questions or anything, y'all put in the comment section. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you.